Hello. Okay, let's just stop the music before so YouTube doesn't go after me. I've never played with this, but this is the built-in camera recording tool built in by Microsoft. It's actually recording at 60 frames. I'm surprised. I guess this machine can handle it on the USB interface. It's a USB 2.0 camera. Consider buying a new camera, but right now, why buy anything new? I got to see if we can make a turnover on YouTube. But anyhow, this is Drake the Dragon. See? Dragon, as always. Dragon, dragon foot paws. Big floppy, stumpy paws. You know what? I'm just going to start making more looking for off the shelf stuff because it's kind of kooky and it's funny. But as much as I'm a perfectionist and would rather make stuff, like I still like scaly tails or like the rarest ones. And scales. See? I actually have one of these for sale, but. No one wants to buy it at the price that I have, 400. I've been noticing custom scale mail stuff is well over 600. So I'm pretty much at the time where I don't mind selling stuff half price, but it's it's kind of a demeaning. It just means that I don't want to do any more custom stuff. If half the stuff values less, so yeah, I hung up my little wireless access point over there. Didn't need to do that, but I just like stuff on the wall because there's just so much unused freaking space. The family's out of the house right now, so I gave me time to clean the room, and obviously they're going to yell at me for putting holes in the wall again because I always put holes in the wall because when you're a collector, you use every single square space. So if you have a lot of stuff. So right now I got these shelves in, so I may get another one and put it on the other side. Um, I may put up more stuff because that gives me more storage, vertical storage space, which is another thing they don't like either. On the flip side, the vertical storage space is benefit where I can store a lot of stuff more organized. I did that in the last house with only room a 10 by 10 or 10 by 14 and a garage space. So technically I had a 10 by 10, 10 by 20. This house I don't have a garage space because I can't get access to it 90% of the time. I've got cabinets over there, so I'm slowly moving stuff back into the cabinets. But what I'm doing is I'm staging them because I've got some equipment over there. Like I think I got a container, and I remember seeing it, a jewelry container, which I should move all the jewelry in and bring it over here and put it in the shelf. Then I've got another container of stuff, which there's a shelf that I think it'll fit in. So I'm trying to figure that out a little bit of this and that. But um, and I think that container's still good, so unlike some of these where I'm missing the top because the top broke on them, but I still saved the container. I just don't like the container without the top because dust gets in, and without that, it seems like it does a better job. Even this little box here with the cover on it does ten times better than these two open boxes I have down here, since the majority of that stuff is meant to just be temporary floating, so... I'll probably still have a couple of open containers, but they'll dip, they'll disappear over time, actually. Um, closed containers are better because you can see the stuff on the side or you just label it. So I'm slowly getting them back to that. I got lots of open containers in the closet, which, again, is also a dust magnet. So I'm probably going to go run over to the uh, the uh, my favorite Wally World and get a bunch of smaller containers. They were all blocked yesterday, so I'm like, fuck this. I was going to get some more of the smaller ones like these guys are like really good containers. These are stackable, but tip. Sterile and the brand made from, uh, 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 what do you call it, Target. They look identical, but they're slightly different. Even they have the same name of Sterile or whatever that brand is on there, which is funny because I just ran into that with a couple of drawer cases, which are nice over there, but... I'm going to be getting more stackable cases because I can put stuff in the stackable cases and stack them and move them around. And the beauty of them is that because they are closed and unlike cheap cases, now they do disintegrate over time. Cardboard boxes do the same. They get wet, whatever. So two things I'm ordering is that, some cleaning tools and silica gel packs. I get them from hard drives all the time. I've saved them. I've got a bag of them somewhere. But as I'm going through, I'm ordering a few stuff along the way that's trying to keep it under a $50 budget. My goal is to recall some of these outside projects with other people that I spent three or $4,000 on and start recalling them back and start paying for home stuff here. Because, see, the most common thing that's ticking me off is I'm waiting on them 
I don't got that many large money making projects. Like, I mean, I could sell a few things here and there, which I'm probably going to do tonight. Just list a few things up for sale for next week, like tablets and things like that. The idea is I want to get rid of some stuff to pay for some of the material differences. And then I'm going to clean up some of the collectible type stuff, if there are even any value. Some of them gotten like disintegrated. I mean, how long does plastic last? This is plastic and it's still alive. But the plastic on my printer is just literally crumbling. I'm actually almost at the point of bringing another printer in tomorrow and just hooking it up to this machine and sharing it on the network because uh, it'll do the job. Although sharing it on the network is probably going to cause more problems. So I'm probably better off getting a micro print server or a Raspberry Pi with a file sharing level mode turned on or something along that line. It's, it's better to run it that way. But I have so much other junk to go through that it's unbelievable. So my goal today is to finish that box up, get this box onto the second drawer, see what other things I don't need, clean up that box out there, and then go to... Wally world and see if I can get more totes to upgrade some of the storage in the totes. Cardboard boxes are cheap. They're great for long-term storage too. But as soon as they're open box, which is actually easier to find electronic stuff, they collect dust like crazy. So by putting them in storage totes that I can move around and I should be able to go through the totes once in a while and move stuff around and just do an organization I should be able to get around a lot of that the downside there's a higher cost to it but the upside to it because it is sealed and I can put things to keep it sealed it may actually hold better value like right now I've got a couple of chips that I think I have in here so I can find them I don't think they're out there on the surface but there are a couple of chips that are here that I'm probably going to go through I feel like these are dry packs that I've been putting in the case and these are reusable too since you can reset a lot of these um, you just have to put them on a cooker but things like a lot of electronic components here putting them in a container like this ensures that I don't have moisture problems but the problem is they do trap moisture so putting these little gel packs preserves them better and as I'm going through my electronic collection, seeing what I can salvage. Now, I'm not saying everything is usable. I could just throw it all away like some people. But if I organize it, and you might need a maximum 232 voltage converter chip, or you want to rob it out and use it as a voltage step-up converter to generate 24 volts from a 5-volt supply as a reference voltage, you can jerry-rig that to do that. See, it's actually got it in one of the capacitor circuits, a uh, charge pump circuit. But the idea is the fact that if you know a lot of electronics, you can figure this stuff out and minimize having to buy stuff. You can rob stuff out like Joe, but the thing is that because this way I can keep it more organized, if I have to deal with another crisis, I can deal with it much faster. The only downside is that moving is a problem. See, in the past, I've always designed everything not to be modular, built into the house. So... That's the reason why hanging up is not, I didn't hang everything up as much as I should have. As a matter of fact, what I should do is get more shelving equipment and just keep putting shelves in. Because then I could put these totes on the shelves. And if I have to move quickly, I pick up the totes and just start taking them in bigger boxes or putting them on carts and then bringing them up and moving them. Because it's a lot faster than moving them in totes. The downside of totes, as always, is always a downside. Number one, you can see what's inside the clear one, which is great. The not so clear when you can't see what's inside of them, but here's a catch. And I've learned this when they were stored in the garage. If a rat gets inside, you'll never know until they chew up everything. So a clear tote is actually better because you can see if something gets inside that shouldn't be there. And um, I noticed the clear totes last longer in sunlight too. So these actually last longer. They're next to paper. Paper also lasts well in sunlight, surprisingly. Um, as much as I thought they'd break down. They break down more over moisture, stuff like that. So paper boxes are a good one to two year solution. They're good for cheap boxes, so I may still use them to, like, to store the glass jars inside of. But everything else I've been finding out is the plastic totes are a godsend. Even if they are still open and they weren't sealed correctly because they were missing the drawers, covers, or whatever, um, they held stuff from breaking apart. So... But again, they have a lifespan, and some of these totes are more than five years old, so they've broken down on me. 
And then you have plastics that do something weird like this, which I have no clue how to get rid where they fuse together. I mean, if I can't fix it, I'm probably just going to toss more of that stuff out and just not care anymore because it's just not my time. But, I mean, when you print stuff out like ABS, I mean, ABS will last for a long time. This is pretty cool. I might bring a, get another 3D printer. I'd like to put a table up on top right there and put the 3D printer up there, actually. And I put one way up there in the corner and then just have it printing shit out throughout the day. But... Um, this is my shop space, or whatever's left of it. As always, I'm shrinking stuff down every day at a time. I had good years, and that year ended 2019, and it looks like I'll never recover. But financially, two thumbs up. I'll probably survive this recession, no problem whatsoever, but I will recall all of my fucking projects from people. I'm, I'm literally going to do this, and I'm literally going to even show up at their front door demanding my materials back because I have more free time once the slab is cleaned up I'm gonna be able to do sewing 3d printing electronics all of the stuff all over again right in the middle of a recession and I'll be self-sufficient and that's all that really matters self-sufficiency bye y'all